What is going on, everybody? Another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. In today's episode, I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is purely uh, regarding my setup and everything that I use to uh, go out and about and make YouTube videos. And I suppose in this video, I just wanted to talk uh, about anyone that wants to start up a YouTube channel, um, the basics you sort of need, and um, some of the lessons that I've learned along the way that, um, that you can probably take advantage of and not do on your channel to uh, make it even better. So uh, let's get into that. So, you're gonna start up a YouTube channel. Um, what do you do? What do you sort of need? You don't even really need that much. Um, when I first started, I started with the camera I'm still using now um, because it recorded 1080 at uh, 25 frames, so I thought that was pretty good and pretty fine. Um, it comes with some kit lenses that I've only just li literally stopped using to, uh, to late. And I thought, well, it's got a microphone built in, um, I've got the lenses, um, I've got a couple of SD cards, um, I'm going to need some how to you know, edit it on the computer. Um, at that time, I didn't have Premiere Pro and I was using a program called uh, Filmora um, back in the day. I used to use that uh, before I got into Premiere Pro and learned how to use um, Premiere Pro. And uh, yeah, that's how I started. So I jumped in my garage, I cranked the ISO up, um, put on the rooftop light and uh, started recording my Waco, which is one of my first videos that I did in the channel. Hi guys, welcome to 4x4 Camping and Adventures. I just wanted to give you my honest review on the Waco CFX 50 litre. And um, and then yeah, and then obviously went out and about and started reviewing stuff. And then that's sort of how I got to where I am now. Some people obviously out there enjoying my content. So did never ever thought at, uh, you know, when I first started, I'd be doing, you know, 10,000 subscribers, um, you know, getting videos with over 100,000 views and that kind of stuff, which is um, in my eyes pretty damn awesome. So yeah, you don't need much. And I don't, honestly, I didn't even need the DSLR that I'm talking to you on right now. Um, that's been going strong for the last three years, but um, you don't even need that. Every one of these days um, has a smartphone, right? So um, this, is, this is the latest iPhone, so it's an iPhone 11 Pro, but you don't even need something this flash. Um, you, can get, uh, you can get probably a standard three-year-old, four-year-old Samsung, like an S7 or even an S8, um, which records 1080p. Uh, if you wanted to, you can get little cradles for them and then you can uh, mount uh, microphones on them, or you can use internal microphones, or you can just hook up a lav to the, directly to the phone and record that way. So many ways of doing it, and um, you can get really good audio, really good video, and that'll be your start. And then uh, from there, obviously, when people start watching your channel and that kind of thing, you just sort of expand and expand, and um, you know, in, you know, invest in your equipment, which is um, what I do. So. Um, I suppose with YouTube, um, you have obviously YouTubers, they make money. Um, I make a little bit of money, it's not much, but um, I suppose most of the money I use for YouTube goes either to my Rego uh, or it goes to camera equipment or um, mods to the car so I can continue to make content and um, give you guys more content obviously along the way. So um, I suppose that's where my YouTube money goes. Um, if, you're trying to, if you're trying to make money off YouTube, it's a, uh, it's a fickle thing. And you really need to, um, yeah, look at if you're going to be jumping into a very saturated market. So I'd probably say now the 4x4 camping uh, YouTube market is pretty saturated. So if you're sort of jumping in on there, try to make something different. Try to differentiate yourself to everyone else and uh, do something a little bit unique because um, it's definitely a saturated market now. And you've got a lot of big players um yeah making youtube videos and that kind of definitely um impact on your views if uh you know you don't obviously get that traction of a uh, video that sort of doesn't, doesn't go viral but it has obviously a lot of views that um that people like to watch so i suppose that's sort of my first bit of advice for uh, anyone that wants to jump into youtube um yeah try to do something a little bit unique and a little bit different so i suppose the next thing to talk about is sort of my thought process how i think about doing youtube videos and what i'm actually going to do and how i do it um, first thing I normally talk about is uh, what I'm going to take, what equipment I need, um, and what kind of shots and that kind of stuff I want. So what I normally do is before I go out, I'm going to ask myself, do I need outside shots, do I need inside shots? I don't always take my camera gear on every single trip because I do have a lot of it, but at the same time, it's just bulky and you don't really want to be taking stuff you don't need, um, especially if you're traveling, especially if you're going out on like, long trips, you don't need like a camera sitting in the back. They get used once and it's just in there rolling the you know, rolling around in the car and that kind of thing. So you sort of want to um, think about what kind of things you want to take to the shoot and then obviously you can work out your shots and that kind of thing from there. 
So what I normally take out on pretty much every trip is a uh, little GoPro. This is a GoPro Hero 5. Um, I picked up this little guy for about 350 bucks and it's been an absolutely awesome bit of kit to my arsenal essentially. So this is my interior shots, exterior shots, all that kind of thing. It's not a little bit, it's not a bit, you know, you, it's not afraid to get wet. Um, it's waterproof um, if you obviously have this side casing, which I don't at the moment because I um, use that to hook up my microphone, but it's, a, it's a waterproof or water resistant or however they want to explain it from the box. Um, once it's got all the uh, flaps on there and you can get like external, I'm oh, sorry, you can get um, new batteries for it off eBay for 50 bucks for three. Uh, they don't last as long as a normal GoPro battery, but um, you definitely do, do. You know, you're definitely going to get a lot better lifespan um, out of your shooting compared to buying really expensive uh, GoPro batteries. And the cool thing about these um, is you can hook up external microphones and all that kind of stuff to them as well. So what I normally try to do is hook them up into one of these guys. So this is a uh, metal casing I got off uh, Amazon for like 30, 40 bucks. They're cheap as chips, and um, yeah, you can put uh, microphones, obviously you can mount microphones and that kind of stuff on the top, and uh, you can put filters and that kind of stuff on there if you want to, but I don't do it with mine. And comparing that to, I suppose, the stock standard uh, little plastic boy they give you, um, is a little bit ish. So these, you can't really mount anything to. So these are like a little rugged case, which, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with it, um, but you can't really mount microphones unless you want to use double-sided tape and that kind of stuff, and it gets a bit how you going. So you got to sort of use the external mic, sorry, the internal microphone for something like this. Whereas uh, something like this, you can uh, obviously hook up an external microphone. So the external microphone that I use, I'll just quickly grab it for you. So it's a uh, Rode shotgun mic. Um, comes with a little dead cat on the front of it. Um, pretty simple microphone, very very small, uh, extremely high quality, and uh, puts out some really good audio for a um, standard shotgun microphone. This was about 70 bucks um, off the top of my head, but uh, the benefit of this, I could use it on my DSLR if I wanted to, and I still do in every single shoot now that I've got the external microphones, um, or sorry, the external recording equipment, which I'll get into later, but um, I still use this as my uh, on-the-camera microphone because obviously the camera and the DSLR isn't that crash hot. So uh, I use this pretty much when I'm out and about if it's really windy. This pretty much takes out 90% of the wind noise. Obviously, you still need to take a little bit out in Premiere, but, um, but the benefit is you can mount it on top of your, uh, your GoPro mount here and then you have external audio, which um, makes a huge difference, especially when you're making YouTube videos because audio is king, something I learned uh, very harshly at the start of my YouTube career. The, uh, the surf is pretty average, but uh, it took a while, but we got there in the end and uh, they sent me a new thumper. So I'm gonna do this time a uh, 15 PSI back up to high pressure and uh, only just now I got it right. But uh, with the GoPro, there's a little bit of a downside with this equipment and I don't understand why GoPro did it, but there is obviously a money reason they did it. You need one of these. So these are a 3.5 mil to USB-C adapter. So what they do is they hook up into the GoPro, which is fine, then you have this little dongle thing, but then you have a 3.5 mil jack that you can hook up your Rode microphone or whatever microphone you plan to use. So then you have this thing going on. So it's a hell of a setup and it would just be so much better if you could just run a 3.5 mil jack into the GoPro. Now, if you're smart and savvy and you haven't bought a GoPro 5 like me, because I only use this for your, uh, 1080p 60fps stuff, so it's not 4K, I don't really use it for 4K. Um, I don't really see the benefit of doing 4K YouTube videos because yeah, I, just, I mean, most of my stuff on my Canon's 1080p, so it's no real point going from 1080p to 4K in, in the video, so um, I just normally record everything at 1080p. Um, if you can get an older GoPro that does 1080p um, at 60fps, so I, I think it's a GoPro Hero 4, um, which still had the 3.5mm jack, or it might be the Hero, Hero 3, just don't quote me on that, just check it up. But when you buy it, you can get a second-hand one for about 150 to 200 bucks, and they have a 3.5mm jack in the actual GoPro, so you don't need this thing, which is actually about 80 bucks. So this little adapter here is about 80 bucks, so it's not cheap, and um, it's definitely a pain in the butt when you're trying to do external audio on a GoPro. But you have to have it, because the internal microphones are good, but any kind of wind noise or anything like that, it's, it's all over. So um, I've had many a shoot where I've gone out, tried to film, 
and um, realized that my GoPro settings are set onto internal microphone because I might have been talking in the car. And then I go to do a shoot, do the whole whole thing, and don't realize I'm not actually using the external microphone. And boom, you have all this wind noise, creaking and croaking, and all the noises coming from the actual, uh, you know, the brackets and the mounting equipment. They, they all move, and they make little noises into the microphone, and all that kind of stuff can uh, ruin a shoot, and it's ruined many of my shoots that I've uh, done in the past. So I've had to reshoot and that kind of thing. So for example, Wayne's video where we did the 79 series. Uh, we had to redo that shoot because when I used this microphone, which was fine, this microphone was great for it, we did the same thing on the secondary shoot, but there was a lot of background noise. The background noise killed the shoot. It's been going on here, obviously, but uh, main thing, let's talk about the tyres, let's talk about the tray, and also the chassis extension. We'll do all that, I suppose, in one piece. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, take us through it, man. Why'd you, uh, why'd you go this tray? And, yeah, yeah so features, features and benefits. This tray is done by Bland. So then I had to reshoot the whole thing um, with Wayne, which is a massive pain in the butt. But um, but yeah, just try to get your audio right on the first go. And that's going to sort of segue me into my new audio equipment. So let's talk about that. I'm getting a bit thirsty. We're going to crack a beer because uh, this video is going to go on for a little bit and uh, we're all going to need a bit of a, a bit of a cheer me up. Good beer that, go, if you are going to get into it, or if you like beers. So, audio equipment. So, the one thing on my channel that has been negatively criticised and, uh, yeah, haven't really got right till now, but uh, that's after a lot of experimenting, spending money, then realise I probably spent the wrong money, all that kind of stuff on different bits of audio equipment. Um, I have now invested in some lab mics. Um, these guys here are similar to the Rode system, but the reason I actually didn't go with the Rode system is this actually gives you two transmitters, so you can have two people talking. So, uh, the, so essentially when you're um, looking at audio equipment, um, you obviously want to make sure that if you're going to do something, let's say doing something with somebody else, um, they need to talk into a microphone too. So I would have had to bought two road systems, that would be, uh, I think they're 300-ish bucks each, so that would be 600 bucks of just little external wireless transmitters, and I just couldn't justify that um, just for audio. So I started looking around and um, started looking at these different things, and then uh, these Comica um, microphone systems rocked up and uh, had really good reviews online. A lot of people said they're great, um, great distance, reception, all that kind of stuff's fine. Um, USB-C, so super easy charging. I can charge them on the go when I'm in the car and uh, they've got um, obviously internal microphones onto the actual units, but uh, you can use an external lab, which is what I've been using um, when I'm out and about in most of my new videos. So um, you should see the definite, there should be a definite difference in audio quality in my new stuff. So um, the idea behind these is uh, you can, if you want to, if someone doesn't want to wear a, um, a lab mic, you can hook these up into your shirt like that and then talk straight into the microphone or of course you can have it hooked up to a lab and have the lab on your shirt if you don't want this thing flapping around because obviously with that you don't have any wind um you don't get any wind uh deflection or anything like that because it's pretty much on a straight microphone they do come with a little uh dead cat they call it uh, which you can put over here so that sort of sits on there but i think that looks a bit silly um and if you're doing videos i just think that's a little bit funny sort of sort of hangs up here and you sort of have this big fluffy thing. So um, I use one of these guys and the wind uh, deflection on these guys is perfect with the phone. So that's perfect for what I do. So um, so yeah, my next Trident build, which uh, gets filmed in a couple of weeks, um, we're gonna be using these. So it's gonna be interesting to compare these to uh, the original video I did with Declan um, on audio side. Um, and you obviously have a receiver. That little guy there plugs into whatever audio equipment you've got. So you can plug that into a GoPro if you want to with the adapter, or you can plug it into your DSLR, or you can even plug it into your phone and uh, use your phone as an external uh, microphone, like the recording. So um, that's pretty cool. And I can't really show you, but I'll get a little bit of B-roll footage. Um, I use an Olympus um, external audio recorder now. So the actual whole video, I've been talking into this Olympus. And uh, the reason I went with that is when I was doing the video with Alex, um, we're on the beach and he was using this external microphone and I was like, oh, what do you got there? And um, he's like, oh, it's an external microphone recorder and you can plug in a you know, bunch of mics to it and all the rest of it. And I was like, oh, that's a cool bit of kit. And he goes, it's not cheap, but um, you know, it gives you pretty much perfect audio. 
So with that, I thought, well, instead of using this shotgun mic that I use on the camera, why don't I invest in some external audio equipment? And then obviously with that, I can use that in all my videos. It's uh, processed through the one unit. It doesn't go through the camera, so you don't get any of the uh, background noises of the camera because cameras can put up uh, background noises. So I went and bought the Olympus um, external recorder, which then records onto an SD card. And it uses USB-C to uh, recharge, all that kind of stuff, so I can recharge on the go. The battery lasts like ages anyway, but um, I think you get 12 hours out of the battery. I can get 23 hours of recording on a 64 gig card, so I can get heaps of footage um, with that particular unit and have no issue with uh, wind noise, you don't have an issue with external um, external noises and that kind of stuff. Obviously your lab microphones do take out a lot of the external noise and that kind of thing, you only really hear yourself. So um, definitely worth the money there. And that was about, I think about 300 bucks. So then you obviously add your SD cards, so you're looking at about 500 bucks just for the external audio equipment on the, um, on the new videos. So pretty hefty investment. But at the same time, that is going to save a lot of my videos from uh, being wiped and uh, yeah, not being used essentially. So um, it's going to save me time and uh, time in, you know in the, in the future. So um, definitely a good investment. So how I do it now, I suppose my setup is I've got my DSLR and then I have my external microphone on top. That normally hooks into one of these guys, transmitting to myself. And then uh, with that, I've uh, got the shotgun mic that sits on the top as well, which is the Rode that I showed you before. And with that, um, that gives my, me my audio equipment. And um, so the audio from the shotgun mic is going into the camera. Then I can sync up the two audio sources in Premiere Pro, and then bang, you have a uh, perfect audio and uh, crystal clear. And you can still um, take the noise out and that kind of stuff in Premiere Pro with a little bit of, like, with a bit of fiddling, but um, you essentially have perfect audio with that, which is um, pretty damn cool. So uh, that's how I do my new um, audio equipment. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty up there with, uh, how things are done and it's pretty, I suppose, um, complicated now compared to just chucking a you know, shotgun mic in there and using that. But obviously it takes away a lot of the background noises and that kind of thing with your own shoots, which, um, which I'm gonna be doing a lot more interviews and that kind of stuff with um, other Triton owners. And I want to really make sure that that audio was perfect for every single last uh, shoot because I know those guys have um, don't have a lot of time and uh, can't really come out for another shoot and I can't really ask them to do that because I just don't think that's fair. So that's why I really invested in some huge audio equipment. So I uh, spent a lot of money on um, the audio. So hopefully you guys at home are enjoying the benefits of the better audio um, that's coming out of the camera. Or should I should say coming out of the, uh, the Olympus external recorder. So that's my audio side. That's how I do audio now. Um, let me talk to you about a little bit about uh, drones and uh, some of the ideas I can give you about drones and that kind of thing um, when you're starting a YouTube channel, what I use and that kind of stuff. All right, drones, drones, drones. So there's a fair bit going on with drones because um, a lot of people spend a lot of money on drones and uh, I rarely use my drone, unless I'm doing a trip video, um, which, I mean, I don't do too many because when I'm on trips, I like to still enjoy the trip and not sit there and buzz a drone around everywhere. But uh, this is the drone that I use, so it's a DJI. Um, Air 2 and um, I believe for the size and the quality of the, audio, the video you get, it's um, it's unmatched. So it's a bloody good drone. Um, it's obviously got sensors and all that kind of stuff to stop it from bashing into stuff and all that kind of thing. But um, for the size and as I said, you know, it breaks down to be probably about as big as my hand, I suppose, uh, when I break it all down. If you compare it to uh, my hand, yeah, it's about as big as my hand. So it's, okay, let me get that shot better. There you go, about as big as my hand. So tiny little thing, um, but as I said, I don't use it too often, um, but a lot of videos that I do are DIYs, so there's no real reason to have a drone there, but um, I do love photography, so I do use this to uh, take photos um, as well, so I use it for that. Um, I've got the Fly More kit, so it comes with the free batteries um, and all that kind of stuff as well, so it definitely gives you a little bit more flying time because you get about 20 minutes out of a battery. And uh, with drones, um, I suppose the big thing is when you first start on YouTube, don't think you need to go buy a drone and get drone footage because drone footage can actually ruin a video. If you have too much of it, it can make your video very, very boring. So um, just think about that before you go drop a thousand bucks on a drone because uh, you might not need it. You can use that thousand dollars to go into other equipment that is much, much better, i.e. audio or video um, that can, uh, yeah, sort of make your videos a lot better in the long run rather than just spending a thousand bucks on one device that really you're gonna use every now and then and maybe take some photos with it. You can't use it in the rain, can't really use it in the winter because it's too windy. 
um, and they get wet, they're stuffed. If you crash into the into the ocean, that's a thousand bucks down the drain. So um, yeah, use your money wisely and use your money in other areas that um, can make your videos better, I suppose, and it was uh, sort of what I'm getting at there. But uh, moving on from drones, that's a pretty simple topic. Lighting, another big thing is lighting. So you can probably see I've got a light here. I'm actually just using an LED that I got from Bunnings for 50 bucks. Um, that's just giving me a bit of fill lighting because I'm in a dark room, it's overcast today, I haven't really got much light coming in here. Um, this, it is actually 11 o'clock, but again, not much light's coming in. Um, so these guys here are my fill lights. So these are just about a 96 LED. They take a standard Sony battery. Um, so these batteries are pretty cheap and cheerful. Um, pretty simple to get, so it's an MPF550, which is a Sony battery. So if you've got any old, older Sony equipment, that's what these use. And the idea is, they just plug into like that, and then you have a full-blown LED light, which you can adjust the brightness on if you want to. So, like so, adjust it, make it brighter, make it darker, and then you get fill light. So, obviously a little bit too close, and probably a little bit too, see like that? So that is your fill light. So the reason I went um, with these guys is, again, cheap and cheerful. These are about 50 bucks. Batteries, um, you can get four for 60 bucks and you've got plenty of light for most of your shoots. If you're doing uh, nighttime shooting and that kind of thing, uh, these are pretty much the best thing you can have because you're really not gonna have enough light for a DSLR or a GoPro because the sensors on them are too small and it's not getting enough light to uh, go into the unit. Um, so you obviously then you have um, high ISO and then you get a lot of noise through your videos. Um, so these guys here pretty much allow you to, if you don't have the Sony battery, what you can do is open these guys up and put, uh, I think a six, if I can open it up, six AA batteries in there. So if you use rechargeable batteries, but I still reckon getting one of these little things is the best thing you can do. This is a um, charger for the Sony batteries. It goes USB-C into a USB point um, and you can charge two at once. So if you're on the move, and you're going between um, locations and you want to film it, that is probably the best way you can do it because these guys um, can be charged up when you're driving around. You just put them in your kit and then, uh, yeah, you just plug this in and then you have a full-blown lighting setup when you're out and about. Now, with those as well, I do use... Top and roll around in there. See if it still works. I have dropped this a couple of times. No, it actually still works. There you go. Stuff and roll around in there, probably a bit of pro broken plastic. It did fall over once when I was on a shoot, so it's probably something in it that's broken. But again, cheap and cheerful. If it breaks, it's 40 bucks to get a new one, so you don't have to go spend a thousand bucks on lights and that kind of stuff to uh, to get your audio equipment bang on. Um, now, with the uh, lights, you're gonna need somewhere to put them onto, so why don't you use some little um, tripods, which are, again, 30 bucks for three, I think it was. Um, they're just little metal tripods that you can put them on. And most of your lights is going to come with a, uh, not this one particular, because that needs an adapter. But most of your lights come with a, um, I think it's one fourth uh, or a quarter inch uh, screw hole. So you can uh, obviously screw them onto a, uh, you know, a tripod or whatever. So that's my lighting. That's what I use for lighting. Pretty simple, but um, pretty effective. And I suppose you look at the video with me and Alex, um, we use a very similar lighting setup in that video. And um, yeah, these things work awesome, I suppose, in, uh, in, in dark situations and you don't have to crank that ISO up. It still gets pretty good footage um, when you're uh, on the go. So I'm pretty much through my kit. There's one last thing I wanted to talk about. And this camera is purely used for destruction shots. And I'll get into that in a second. So this guy here is a little 4K, cheap and cheerful, it's a uh, Sprout brand, whatever that is. Um, but it's a cheap and cheerful camera. Um, now, this is purely, it goes into, like, if I'm going to do underwater shots, um, not that I do many, but if I'm going to do underwater shots, if I'm going to do under the car shots, um, like this is going to sit underneath the car and get bashed around and that kind of thing, that's what I use this for. I'm not going to go put a $400 GoPro underneath the car, because I just think that's a recipe for disaster. And the image quality that comes out of this for those shots, which might only last for like five or six seconds on the video, is fine. Um, yes, it's a little bit lower quality, but at the same time, you really got to justify, if you want that high quality shot for five seconds of video, are you really going to risk your $400 GoPro to go under, under your car and maybe get bashed up by a rock or a branch or go into a bog hole or something like that? And what if you lose it? This is like a $50 camera. So, um, yeah, if, if it gets lost, yeah, I've lost a $50 camera, but at the same time, you can always go fish for it. 
But if I do lose it or if I do get does get lost on a trip, I'm not going to be sitting there going, damn it, I just lost my $400 GoPro, which is uh, my main go-to for like, let's say 50% of my shots. This is probably 2% of my shots that I'm uh, doing under, you know, under cars and that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's got a little bit of a uh, destruction element to it because uh, with these, you can, as I said, um, you know, just sort of chuck them underneath the cars and not really worry about it too much. They got a standard battery, which, um, you know, just is a uh, 900 milliamp hour battery, but um, with them as well, you can put an SD card in there, a, uh, I should say a, a micro SD card or a uh, mini SD card. So um, I think they take up to a 64 gig, so um, plenty. But as I said, they got a little microphone in there, but most of those shots I put you know, audio, audio dub over anyway, so it's not too much of a stress. So if you're gonna use, ignore my chair, if you're gonna use your uh, camera, um, oh, sorry, your phone, I should say, you can get these little guys here. This one here is from um, Manfrotto. So it's a really uh, reputable uh, tripod brand, I suppose, if you're into cameras. Uh, it comes with a little adapter on the back, so you can actually sit it up and just talk to yourself if you want to, so that's cool. Uh, but as well, you've got the adapter on there, so you can actually um, hook this up to a tripod and use it for a, uh, you know, talking to the camera. So if you're only just getting started out, these guys here are about 30 bucks. Um, you can get all different types, you can get metal ones off eBay and that kind of stuff as well. It goes onto a tripod and boom, you're ready to rock and roll when you're filming. So um, at the moment, I've just got a little adapter on here, which I use for uh, little little different shots, a little adapter that screws in there. But that's what I use for uh, if I'm just going to do um, outside the car filming or if I'm just doing a little vlog or something like that that I don't want to get the GoPro out for. I can use my iPhone because that does 1080p at... Um, 60 FPS as well, and I suppose the other thing that's not on here at the moment, which I don't really use too much, is a DJI Osmo, um, Osmo 2, the gimbal. I use that a little bit when I'm uh, doing out and about stuff, but I don't use that too much anymore, so I'll probably sell that um, in the near future because it just doesn't get used enough. I do use this guy now, which is a, um, a Joby uh, tripod, which is uh, awesome because the cool thing about this is uh, you can bend it, you can adapt it to... Uh, go around obstacles, you can put around tree branches, that kind of stuff, and get some different shots. Um, I would recommend not getting the cheaper versions of these because they don't last. Um, a little tip that I've used, the cheaper ones, they don't last. They break and they snap and all that kind of thing. The Joby is a extremely high quality. Um, this is about a $100 tripod, but it's an extremely high quality. Um, yeah, very, very fluid movement. All that kind of thing, you've got adjustability on the top so you can spin it, all that kind of thing. But um, this thing's been out and about in the sand um, everywhere. So this, this is sort of my normal normal go-to out and about camera. Also, you can use it as a, um, you know, a vlog type setup. You can hook your, so I suppose if you want to do it, um, show you how to do it. Hook your man Frodo up to the top, like so. Then you can hook your camera in there, or your mobile phone, I should say. And then boom, you've got a vlogging setup. So pretty simple, right? Um, and you don't really need to go all out and um, spend a stupid amount of money on a uh, gimbal because most of your cameras now in phones, um, especially if you use a rear camera, have a uh, image, stabilizer, image stabilizer in it. So you don't really need too much image stabilization when you're out and about anyway. So uh, next thing I want to talk about is my computer and uh, how I edit my videos and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's get into that. All right, let's talk about the uh, computer setup. So um, I suppose the big thing is uh, you don't need anything flash for video um, editing. Um, you can get pretty damn nice computers for sort of 800 to 1,000 bucks these days. And um, that's gonna do most of your uh, video editing if you um, wanna get into it. Um, I suppose the big thing is Premiere Pro. The way I do it is I rent it off uh, Adobe. So I pay a rental fee, I think of like $14.99 a month roughly to uh, rent it, and um, that saves you buying out the license, that kind of thing, which is uh, pretty expensive. Um, so there's, as I said, there's other programs and that kind of stuff you can use, which is stuff like Filmora, um, which uh, you know you can use for video editing, and all that kind of thing, but I suppose with Filmora, it just doesn't got all the feature set of Premiere Pro, and there's not all the plugins and that kind of stuff you can use to, um, to go editing in, uh, yeah, just change things and that kind of thing. There's a lot more you can do with Premiere Pro compared to Filmora. Nothing wrong with Filmora, but um, there's definitely a benefit of going Premiere Pro over it um, and paying that money. So I suppose um, with everything is when I get a video, I normally dump it onto a hard drive. I've got an eight terabyte hard drive and external, um, and then I use that as a backup as well. So I've got a backup hard drive so you don't lose any footage. Um, I normally delete footage if it's two years old. So if it's two years old, I normally delete it because I haven't used it. Um, but uh, it's obviously two years old, so the cards gonna look different, there's gonna be different aspects of the video, so I can't really use that footage um, unless I'm going back there to talk about a certain thing, like the suspension or something like that. 
um, which obviously I did a follow-up video on. But uh, dump it all on there, and then I lay it all over my timeline. This isn't going to be a Premiere Pro, um, how, to, how to Premiere Pro video, because um, there's, there's a lot better people that know how to use Premiere Pro than me. Um, but I suppose the big thing is pretty much lay it all out in the timeline, get everything you want, and then watch it about 10 times and see if it's actually going to be a uh, video that you want to watch before you drop it on YouTube for uh, you know thousands of people to watch. So um, that's how I sort of do my timeline and all the rest of it. But um, the big thing with uh, Premiere Pro is uh, it is it is pretty, as I said, intensive with uh, you know rendering and that kind of thing. If you've got a slower computer, it just means your rendering is going to take longer, which isn't a big drama if you do it overnight. I used to set up my rendering to do it overnight, so it's not a big drama, um, and wait you know 12 hours for it to render. My new computer definitely makes rendering a lot easier. I get rendering done pretty pretty quickly. But um, but yeah, back in the old days, I was waiting sort of 12 hours to uh, render a video. But um, but yeah, once it's all on there, then yeah, upload to YouTube, put all your captions in, put your tags in, all that kind of stuff, and you're uh, ready to rock and roll. So I suppose that hopefully that sort of answers all the questions that about my equipment, what I use. Um, I don't really talk about the DSLR too much because I mean, it's a Canon 60D. Um, I suppose the big thing about that it's a pretty old camera now and you're like 90Ds are a much better camera and that kind of thing. So if you can invest into a 90D, happy days. But, um, but you know, like I've got the video monitor and all that kind of stuff on there as well, um, which I'll go into a little bit of detail about. So I've only just added this. It's a seven inch uh, video monitor. And the main reason I use that is, uh, is uh, like cropping the actual shot. So with the, uh, the videos, the standard camera, you send a little display, you get is like this big, whereas the, um, the, you know, you get like a seven inch, uh, monitor and it makes it a lot easier to uh, crop and frame your shots. So at the moment I'm talking into my monitor and I can see exactly what's going on. Whereas the old one, you just couldn't really see the crop and the actual um, shot you wanted and um, yeah, it made it a little bit harder. So with this now I can actually see everything which is awesome. And a few other things in there as well. I've got a uh, soft focus um, which I can use to uh, focus my shots and get those real nice soft focusing shots. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a few things that I've done to the DSLR um, over, over the years. Um, actually, now I've only just started really investing in some DSLR equipment. But um, but yeah, she's a, she's a big girl now. She's got everything she needs to uh, you know capture some really nice uh, video and audio. And uh, yeah, hopefully the video is moving forward um, really impress you and uh, the video quality is keep going up and up and up. Um, and I suppose with the DSLR, I do use these, um, the GOB uh, filters. This is a 77 mil, so I, the main sort of go-to lens is a Sigma, uh, trying to think, it's a 17 to 50 mil, sorry, 17 to 50 mil uh, Sigma, um, one point, uh, I think it's 1.2 aperture off the top of my head, but anyway, it's a Sigma lens, and um, it's really nice and sharp, and does all the things that you want it to. 70, 70 mil, sorry, 77 mil uh, polarizing filter and a UV filter for the sensor. And this also doubles up as my 10 to 22 lens that I use from Canon, um, which is my wide angle lens. So normally when I try and get like an interior shot, I use a wide angle lens for that. But um, but yeah, this also doubles up as a 77 mm lens for that particular camera too. So I use Gobe, lens, uh, Gobe filters, they are pretty awesome. But um, I feel like saying that's pretty much my kit. It's not a huge kit, like this has been building up over the last you know, four years. And I suppose the main thing, as I said, if you have a, iPhone or a Samsung or whatever, something that you can record video with. That's all you really need. Um, as I said, with an iPhone, you're going to have to get an adapter, 3.5 mil to US. Uh, sorry, to Lightning with um, an iPhone because that's a bit, a little bit annoying. But um, obviously, with an iPhone, you don't have a headphone jack, and obviously the new Samsungs don't have a headphone jack either. Um, and then you can, as I said, run a Rode mic into here. With an iPhone, you can actually get cradles that actually go around the unit, and you can actually use it as a vlogging camera. Um, which is pretty cool because then you can hook it up to a tripod and actually do you know 1080p on an iPhone. Um, just be aware of the limitations of these. So obviously in a dark area, that's where DSLR comes in its own because they've got a big sensor compared to the little sensor of these guys. So they can let a lot more light in there. If you have a really low aperture um, lens, that's going to let as much light in as possible and give you the uh, best um, you know best chance of getting any kind of uh, decent footage. I suppose is the best way of saying it without having to go to the external LEDs and that kind of stuff. But uh, but yeah, just be aware of the limitations of your iPhone. Um, but 90% of the stuff, I could probably record on an iPhone and uh, get pretty similar footage. Um, it's only when you start editing it in uh, Premiere where you get sort of limitations of like uh, how much exposure you can adjust and the highlights and that kind of thing. Whereas obviously the DSLR has a better highlight step and that kind of thing. So uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much my kit, hopefully. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. My kit changes a little bit, and I think this is sort of my go-to now. Um, if you're watching this after the break video, I'm gonna use the uh, Bendex box. I'm gonna fill it with foam and uh, set it up. So all these little things, like little adapters, like my GoPro adapter, which I use on the side of the uh, side of the car and that kind of stuff. Um, pretty much, uh, yeah, everything is gonna be um, all hooked up into that so it should be pretty cool but um but yeah hopefully that answers all your questions hopefully you got some information out of this if you're gonna start with youtube as i said to start off with your you know your camera phone or some kind of you know uh even like a little um point and shoot that can do 1080p video try to get 1080p as a you know bare minimum because you really want that sort of better order um video, better video quality for your shots and uh as i said don't go wrong with audio like i did um and yeah, thinking audio can be fixed in post when it really can't be. You really want to get your audio sorted out when you're on the shoot. That's the one tip I can give this video is make sure your audio is bang on um, and you will get uh, nice and far on YouTube as long as your content is interesting. So, uh, yeah, I might leave it there. That's been another episode four before camping and adventures. Hopefully you like this content and uh, hopefully answer so many questions. You get a bit of a behind-the-scenes look in how this all, you know, goes together. Um... You probably am noticing, I'm wearing this shirt, which is a 4x4 Camping Adventures shirt. Now, I'm not selling these yet. Um, I've only had this for a couple of weeks. I've taken it on one trip, but I want to make sure it's going to last um, before I go out um, and pitch it to you guys if you want to buy one or not. But um, on this side, it's got uh, it's more than a hobby. It's a lifestyle, and I've got my YouTube and Instagram. And on the back, probably can't see it, but it is a... One of these, and uh, it says, don't follow me, I'm lost. But um, I'll put some pictures up on the uh, on the video so you can see it all. But, um, yeah, I want to make sure. They're really nice quality, um, but I just want to make sure they're going to last because I don't really want to put my name on something. If it's going to shrink in the dryer or something like that, I don't really want to put my name on that and put that out in the uh, masses. So, um, but, yeah, I might sell a few. I'll see how I go. I'm not 100% sure yet, but um, I might do some hoodies and that kind of stuff later on. But, uh, but yeah, as I said, another episode four before Camping Adventures. If I don't see you out in the traction trails, I might see you out in the next video. If I don't see you in the next video, I shall see you later. Bye.